Hi guys, Samantha Sharp here from Prospect United Methodist Church. I am so excited to join you. Today is April 5th, 2020, um, and we're going to be talking about faith today. Big faith, extreme faith. So I want to thank Pastor Larry for allowing me this opportunity to speak um, and for allowing me to co-host with him. And I want to thank each and every one of you that have gotten on here to listen. Um, I'm so thankful for you. And because of you, we are able to spread the word today. So thank you so much. Before I get started, I'd like to pray. Lord Jesus, please be with us as we listen to your word today, God. We thank you for allowing us to gather. We thank you for all of your blessings and provisions, Lord. We thank you for your protection during this time. God, we pray over your word today that they hear your words and not mine, Lord, that they get your peace and not peace from me, Lord, that they are pierced in their hearts, their ears are open, their spirit is receptive to all that you're going to move and shake today, Lord, that you are going to help their faith increase from a mustard seed to moving mountains, God, that you are able to be overly and abundant everything that we need, Lord Jesus. I ask that you continue to just grow our faith each and every day, Lord, as we conquer these rough seas and we continue to move forward in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, we're going to start with our memory verse today, and it is Hebrews 11.1. 1, so we're going to go ahead and read it together. All right, let's get ready. And now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance for what we do not see. So like I said, today we're going to be um, talking about faith and Right now, our faith is really being put to the test. So as you know, today is Palm Sunday. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, it has a lot of significance. It commemorates the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. It was recorded in four of the Gospels. Um, it's important because his entrance into Jerusalem is the fulfillment of the prophecy from Zechariah. And Zechariah had prophesied to Israel that their king would be coming triumphantly to them riding on a colt. The foal of a donkey instead of a war horse. Um, it's significant to mention that the third king of Israel, Solomon, also rode on a mule, which he was an anointed king. Um, a humble king is coming to us, it said. He's coming as one of us. Perhaps this will help us to embrace him better, to allow us to get closer to him. So as we think about Palm Sunday, I started, you know, in Matthew. Matthew 21 is really talking about his entrance into Jerusalem and I continued to read and we were going to talk about you know that entrance and adversity and I got down to Matthew 21 so we're going to go ahead and read if you have your Bible out if you don't that's okay I have it up on the screen um, we're going to go ahead and read Matthew 21 19 through 22 so before this um, Jesus had entered and you know, had talked to several people and things were happening. And um, the next morning he woke up and it said that he was hungry. And so he went outside and he saw a fig tree by the road. And that's where we're going to start. So um, verse 19, seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but you also, you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. That was a big deal for me. That was a big aha for me, especially with everything that we're going through. And it really made me stop and think of what was happening at Palm Sunday, what Jesus was doing in Jerusalem, what he knew was to come that week. He knew the, the waters were going to be troubled. He knew um, that he would be betrayed. He knew that he would have to face the cross. And he took the time to teach his disciples about faith using this fig tree. And it made me think of everything we're going through now. So I looked at the pictures on this next slide and I thought to myself about life. And life is either one picture or the other, right? We either have the calm seas or the rough seas that seem to overtake us. 
Um, right now in this time, it feels like it's rough sea after rough sea after rough sea. You know, you get through one patch and, and something else comes up and the news comes on and another report and another death and another heartbreak and another story. And it just feels like the waves are crashing wave on wave on wave. And the difference between the two, as I sat and thought about it, was the calm seas. When things are calm, you have structure you have order, you have comfort, you have stability, um, things are steady, things are calm, things are predictable. We like that, right? We like everything being on an even keel. We like being able to sit by the beach and we know that the waves are gonna come in quietly and they're gonna leave quietly. We can stay in the same spot as the tide rises. We know we have to rise. It's very predictable, it's very comfortable. Um, and that's just not life. And life is not about being comfort. And it mentions time and time again in the Bible how we should not rely on comfort. We know that there's going to be adversity. Um, the rough seas are uncertain. They're unpredictable. They can feel overtaking. They're harsh. There's fear. There's doubt. There's wavering. And right now that's where we are, the, the rough seas. And as I was thinking about that, and thinking about what Jesus said with the fig tree about our faith, I started realizing that we are at a precipice. We are at the edge of the cliff where we need to make a decision, where we need to look at the circumstances and decide, are we going to have faith or are we going to have fear? And is our faith going to be strong enough? We only said, the Bible says we only need a mustard seed of faith. So are we going to exercise that faith? Are we going to stand on that faith? Are we going to live our lives as though we have faith? Because at this present time, not only is that going to affect our lives, it's going to affect everyone around us. Um, faith is contagious. It is our job to spread faith. It is our job to spread Jesus' word and, and, and God's word. It's, it's our job to spread comfort in the uncomfortable. Um, so as we're thinking about that, that's a novel thought, but right now that has to become an action. It has to become a choice. And I look at the next slide and I think about Jesus and what he was feeling in the garden. And we all know the story of Jesus. And if you don't, in the garden of Gethsemane, he was asking, God, if there was another way, if there was anything else that could be done where he wouldn't have to go to the cross, this is not the way he wanted it to end. And he knew that that wasn't true. He knew what he had to do, but it was, I mean, which waters was he, was he in? Was he in rough waters or was he in calm waters? Were his emotions going through the rough waters or were they going through the calm waters? Um, just because we have faith doesn't mean we can't get through the rough waters. Doesn't mean we don't feel like we're in the rough waters. It's okay to feel like we're in rough waters. Our faith dictates whose we are in those rough waters. We've seen another example when the waters were rough again and the disciples were scared and they woke Jesus up in the boat and he calmed the seas. So this is a time where we have to go back and dig into our scripture. We have to have the sword of the word, which we've talked about several times. We have to know whose we are. We have to know um, that our faith can move mountains. And God has given us that faith already. That although we're in rough waters, the rough waters will not overtake us. That we are protected. That we are safe. And not only are we safe and protected in the rough waters, but we also have to be able to pass that forward. We have to be able to spread that faith. And spread that joy. And spread that comfort. So as we leave today as we leave for discussions as we leave for our groups as we talk because today I really think that we need to talk that we need to collaborate that we need to press in to each other press in to God's word press in to our faith because this is a time where we have to make a decision on whether we exercise our faith or we fall into fear. 
So as we go to the next slide, as we leave to our discussions, I wanna think about peace. And where does that peace come from? It doesn't come from calm waters. Calm waters are, are a unfounded comfort because eventually there will always be rough waters. Eventually a storm will happen. Our peace has to come from Jesus. Our peace has to come from the Spirit. So in John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give it unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That peace is not going to come to us because everything's okay. Because everything is calm and happy. That peace is going to come to us because we made the choice to exercise our faith. We made the choice to dig into our word. We made the choice to spread joy, love, and happiness in Jesus' name and to be his hand and feet in the time of rough waters. So today we're going to break off into our groups and we're going to talk about real discussions. We're going to get honest and vulnerable with each other about what areas of our life do we need to apply that extreme faith, that faith that we talk to a mountain and tell it to move. I want you to visualize standing in front of a mountain right now. Our mountain is right in front of us right now. Right now it's an invisible mountain. But picture a physical structure standing in front of you raised thousands of feet high and speaking to that mountain and telling it to throw itself into the sea. That's extreme faith and that is what we have to exercise right now. So what areas of your life can you or do you need to apply extreme faith to? Dig deep. The second question builds on that. What can you do to strengthen your faith, faith when doubt creeps in? It's going to creep in. Doubt is going to happen. We are human beings. We are not perfect. So doubt is going to come in. We have to armor ourselves. That's why God has us put on the full armor because we know that that's going to happen. So how do we armor ourselves and strengthen our faith when that comes in? Um, and question number three, building on the second question, how can you enroll or who can you enroll in your faithful prayers? So we know that prayer is one of the answers. Who can you enroll in those prayers? Who can you enroll in those huge, extreme faith prayers? Because we are all prayer warriors together. So I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful for this group. I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity to get together. And I'm even more thankful that this group is going to grow and multiply exponentially that we can reach more than we would sitting in a pew because our church is not only a structure, our church is us as people. So I hope that this blessed you. I hope that we can have great discussions. And like I said, Pastor Larry, you can go ahead and take it away um, and wrap us up. But as we enter our groups, I ask that you enter with a cleansed spirit and a heart full of peace and comfort and ready to armor yourself with your faith.